Well, it is a very windy, blustery day. Springtime in New Mexico. Hey, well, I have something here in this typewriter bag. It's not my typewriter, it's Kevin Kittle's typewriter. It's one that he got recently. The Targus laptop bag. What could be in it? A laptop computer? No, no, no. It's an ultra portable typewriter. Any guesses yet what it might be? Of course, you've already read the title of the video, so you guys already know what it is, but we'll just pretend for a moment. Huh? Does that give you any clues? Huh? A little bit more? No, we won't do the strip tease. But look at that. What do you think that is? Yes, you're right. It is a Groma Calibri. Stay tuned. Well, this Calibri came with a nice brown leather case. I didn't bring the case with me today because I thought, hey, this would be a nice morning to go take a scooter ride down to Kevin's house with my little uh, shoulder bag and pick up the Calibri. And um, when I did that, of course, there was no room in the shoulder bag for the whole case and the typewriter, so I just took the typewriter alone. Anyways, it turned out to be a really nasty day to be riding a motor scooter. Boy, the wind's gusting up to 30, 35 miles an hour one of those white knuckle rides. But anyways, so, Groma Calibri. Kevin uh, came over last week one evening and was excited to show this to me. He had just got it, re received it in shipping. And uh, I was pretty impressed with it, I gotta admit. Uh, the Groma Calibri is one of those legendary ultra portable typewriters. They're a little bit difficult to find in the United States, especially with a QWERTY keyboard and in really good shape. They were made uh, especially noteworthy in the movie The Lives of Other, the independent foreign film uh, that I really love that film and uh, really documents sort of the Cold War East German culture of the time. And sure enough, on the back of this, it says Germany, USSR, occupied. It is stamped. We'll show you that here in a minute. So what I'd like to do is talk about the Calibri, show you some of its features, and then I have to go out to the garage and start doing a little servicing on it. This has not been serviced. It has a couple little problems. But uh, let's get to looking at a Groma Calibri. Well, the Calibri is known to be a very thin typewriter, one of the thinnest ever made. And if you measure it from the bottom of the feet to the top of the carriage release lever, it's about two and a half inches approximately. And if we do measure to the top of the carriage return lever, you have to remember that the front half of that lever articulates downward, folding it into its case, and it's about two and three quarter inches approximately is the maximum thickness of the typewriter. Now if we contrast that thickness with the Hermes rocket, this is the 1953 era Hermes rocket with the lid still attached, it measures about two and three quarters also. Okay, removing the lid to the rocket. So two and seven eighths approximately. So I'd say the rocket is probably just a tad thicker than the Calibri. And since we're comparing thicknesses, let's compare it to a Smith Corona Skyrider. And it looks to me like the maximum thickness on the Skyrider is right around the joint of the uh, carriage return lever. And that happens to be about three and one eighth inches approximately, right up to here. So, yeah, the Skyrider is a little bit thicker than either the Rocket or the Calibri. Okay, since I'm in a kind of measuring mood here, let's start by weighing all three of these typewriters. This is the Skyrider. I'm going to weigh this in pounds and ounces, just for the heck of it. So, it's seven pounds. Nine ounces, the Skyrider is. And the rocket with its lid attached. Eight pounds, 4.8 ounces. And now the Calibri. Eight pounds, 4.8 ounces also. It weighs the same as my rocket with the lid. The thing that first impressed me about the Calibri when I first saw it is it felt heavier than it actually weighs because it's so thin. It, there's a sense of density about it. And as you examine the way the body is put together, the way it's built, you realize it actually is really dense. It is 
constructed incredibly well, surprisingly well, and in, in such a way that a few other people that I've seen online describing the Calibri have really described it for me adequately. The online descriptions didn't match what I found to be true with the Calibri, which is, for instance, the frame here, right over here, the body and the chassis are one. It is a cast piece of metal that's then machined. And this is at least uh, an eighth of an inch, maybe three millimeters, four millimeters perhaps thick. This whole casting, the whole body is cast like this. Like, there's no flexing here at all. It is solid. It is a solid casting. And this whole thing continues around to the rest of the construction. The grade of construction is really a lot more rugged than I expected for an ultra portable, considering my experience with other ultra portables with, was with rockets and skywriters that at times appear to be just a little bit flimsy. Not so the Calibri. It really does appear to be built really well. And that, that did surprise me. It looks to me like it's over an eighth of an inch thick, if I measure that. And this thickness continues throughout the entire construction of this thing, including, look at this heavy casting that supports the ribbon assembly. See how thick that is? That's over an eighth of an inch thick of steel. And so it's just an incredibly rigid design, very solid for the size of the machine. But there's a lot of little styling touches I really love about this typewriter. Look at the, uh, the pressure roller release lever, just the little curve to it and the way this is molded here. Or, for instance, the paper bale has a little finger guide here to flip it up. And also, I like the chrome plating on all the, a lot of the parts here on the carriage. It's just a nice touch, a lot of chrome plating. Going over here to the carriage return lever, as I showed you earlier, it does spring load articulates down for storage. And it's just a beautiful little lever, just the way it's designed. There's a little dimple in here that uh, for your finger to touch. The chrome plating on the ends of the carriage assemblies are just really pretty. Beautiful little insignia down here. And here's another elegant feature about the Calibri that I think is great. Both the left and the right side of the carriage have carriage release levers and they're little buttons that you push down. What a nice touch. That surprised me. Right? Oh, did you hear the bell? Oh, such a beautiful little chime. That really surprised me also. There's little details in here that I find really interesting. They went to a lot of trouble to do, like, for instance, the little protrusions that engage the body to hold the ribbon cover in place. There's a spring, a wire spring in there on both of them that holds it in place. That one and this one right here. Of course, you know, the Groma logo, which is so cool, and Calibri, right? Now here's something I didn't expect, but the two feet are, the front one is chrome plated along the rim of it, and there's a rubber pad on the inside that fits in there, where the rear one is more kind of like a duller nickel type finish. But it's a really cool uh, little touch, having the feet chrome plated. And then this little lever on the right side is the manual ribbon reverse. There is also an automatic ribbon reverse. Of course, this is a QWERTY keyboard, and right, an American style keyboard, the dollar sign over the four. And it has um, a shifted degree symbol, which is a very cool touch. And as you can see, the rest of the characters over the numbers there, equals and plus sign, which is pretty cool. But a pretty standard little keyboard as far as Americans go. And it has the uh, backspace on the right side, and this is the uh, margin release on the left right here. And it is a carriage shifted machine. On the right side of the carriage is your pressure roller release lever, which is nice and long and easy to reach. And you have your little thumb protrusion for your paper bale, which is nice. And of course, a right hand carriage release button instead of a lever, just push it down and slide it. On the back of the machine, we have our flip up paper support. You have your two uh, margin settings. It's push and slide as always with most of these. Now on the left side of the carriage, so there is a line spacing selector between one and two. That particular feature on this machine isn't working. The button is kind of pushed down a little bit lower than it should be and it's stuck in the one line spacing position. That's something that needs to be worked on. 
Uh, of course, the left hand carriage uh, release button pushes down like that. The left hand platen knob has an extra inner knob, and if you turn that toward the get my hand out of the way, if you turn it toward the rear, it is the variable, the line spacing variable. And then if you turn it back to tighten it, it will go back to the ratcheting for your line spacing. These tensioning levers are part of the automatic reversing system. So when the lever gets to the inside of the spool, when the, you used up all the ribbon on that one spool, that's what trips the automatic uh, ribbon reversing system. So there's mechanisms underneath these two little parts that does the uh, ribbon reversing. One of the things that amazed me about it, and I haven't really heard anybody else talk about this online, about the Calibris, is if you remember the 5 Series Smith Coronas, and they have the special articulating key tops where the key top starts horizontal and as you push it down it stays horizontal throughout its entire travel. Well, the Calibri has the same feature. The character keys stay flat throughout their entire travel. And this is probably a good time to point out to you that in the construction of the Calibri, they have a key comb, this bar, right down here behind the second row of keys, that's the first set of combs that you can see them underneath there, all those little slots. That uh, helps keep the keys from bending sideways, right? So the key levers are relatively short, but you have a comb very close to the front of the lever, which makes them nice and stable. And then if I can angle this properly, you might be able to see, like right behind the this key, you can see the articulating joint, if I focus on it the articulating joint of how that keycap stays horizontal throughout its entire travel. Well, I gotta admit, the first time I laid eyes on this machine, I was pretty smitten with the styling. It is a beautiful little typewriter, and there's a lot of interesting little engineering and design touches that I'm pretty impressed with. Uh, you know, just little curves and shapes and the special way that they went out of their way to to form things like the uh, paper support and even the little shape of the uh, margin settings and of course this carriage turn lever and just a lot in the buttons for the carriage release on both sides just a lot of cool little design touches even the paper bale there's a certain little angle to these uprights that you have to really look at it closely to, to see but interesting details the thing that really impressed me early on when I first started touching it and handling it was the weight of it and the solidity of it. The uh, body and, and uh, chassis are all one, as I said earlier, and there's no flexing at all of that. Uh, the ribbon cover, yeah, there may be a little bit because it's more of a stamped sheet metal thing, but if you compare that, for instance, to the Rocket or the Skyrider, let me show you. So with the Rocket, there's an inner chassis and then there's an outer thin metal body and the body panels are definitely thin you can flex these things you can push in on the body and it it deforms and deflects if you really wanted to you could just mangle the body of the typewriter with your own hands because it's just thin sheet metal and what gives it rigidity is the shape of it and the fact that it's screwed into the inner chassis with machine screws all around so even if you go back here this whole panel is just thin sheet metal that can be deformed etc and when you feel that and compare it to this, it's just a night and day difference in solidity here. It's amazing. And it has two pressure rollers. Because they're closer to the front edge uh, of the platen, you can go down almost all the way to the bottom of the paper before it begins to slip. A lot of other typewriters put the pressure roller down underneath, which means it's going to slip earlier when you get near the bottom of the page. But this one will type almost all the way to the bottom because of the location of that pressure roller, which is a really nice feature. As far as the typing action, uh, I might give the nod to the Skywriter as far as typing action. Uh, this machine doesn't have a, a touch adjustment. It's okay. It's not heavy at all. It's not a heavy touch. It just feels, it feels something like a rocket, I think, in some ways. You know, the touch does. But uh, it does have that nagging, skipping problem that kind of ruins the whole typing experience right now. But of course, that's just the way this is. Dirty and having, haven't been serviced for maybe forever. We don't really know. So one thing I noticed about the keyboard, and of course every brand of typewriter is going to be a little different, uh, and it, it depends on how your fingers work with it, but I find 
the shift lock key is really close to the A, a little too close for my comfort, and I tend to, I found myself hitting partly the A and partly the shift lock. It's a little bit crowded, and also trying to hit the Z is a little hard to do with my left hand. I have to kind of kink my left hand over a little bit when I'm doing that. So it's not quite suited for my touch, as for uh, the way my hands work as far as uh, touch typing. It's a little crowded of a keyboard. Uh, as far as where we go from here, uh, I'm going to take this out to the workbench and I'm going to start taking it apart and we'll shoot a little video of that and I don't know what I'm going to find and I'm, I don't know how easy it'll be to take apart or anything, but it'll be fun. So. Uh, Hey, let's go out and see if we can service this. I have this old blue towel that I've used for a long time for working on my typewriters. and uh, So I'm going to have to keep track of these feet because the back two are not as chromed as the front two. And also, one of these feet is missing a screw right here. Now on the right rear foot, there are two washers underneath the bracket, and there weren't any on the left one. That's interesting. And the remaining foot here. And it looks like the rear panel just pulls right off, and a lot of nice red eraser chromes. Here is the uh, spring motor, and the escapement mechanism is right next to it. Pretty compact design actually. Look at this heavy sheet metal stamped or machined. Really heavy. Wow. And you can see the thickness of the body panels. Cast metal. Look at that casting. Pretty solid. Yeah, so it looks like I'm going to be uh, doing some uh, blowing out eraser crumbs, brushing them out carefully, and uh, not blowing too hard with the compressor. I don't want to move, blow out any parts or little springs, but definitely needs a little bit of cleaning of eraser crumbs before I can go any further with it, and uh, we'll see how much degreasing. I'm pretty sure I'll be degreasing the slots of the segment, but uh, I don't know about the rest of it. We'll see. These stiff bristled brushes you get at beauty supply stores, these are like for applying permanents and other kinds of chemicals to hair or hair coloring brushes maybe they're kind of stiff so they they get into these little gaps and can get out the eraser crumbs that are kind of sticking and carefully brush out any crumbs in the slots of the segment you know the insides of this was actually remarkably clean the uh, Draw band appears to be monofilament, so it might have been replaced at one time. I don't think they would have used monofilament in the original uh, construction of this back in the 1957. I kind of doubt it. So perhaps it's been worked on, but since then it's certainly had a lot of red eraser crumbs in the machine. And I think at this point in time, it's probably a good idea to take out this new green ribbon that Kevin put in so we can keep it safe from getting alcohol and whatnot on it. Save this new ribbon for when we're done. And you ought to be able to tell right down in there, there's a whole bunch of eraser crumbs still that I have to clean out with the brush. So a lot of cleaning yet to do before I start degreasing it. Well, as I operate the keys slowly, and trying to feel how the type bars are, it feels like uh, there's really not much hanging up going on in the slots of the segment. Most of them feel, I mean all the ones I've tried so far, feel like they're they're not hanging up. One thing I notice is they have some return spring tension on these type bars. They actually snap back under spring tension which is pretty cool. And also there's a tiny little spring down here uh, that returns the ribbon vibrator. It helps to make it pop down faster, so I guess it makes the typing a little speedier, which is cool. So all these slots feel pretty good. I don't really feel them gummed up, so I'm not going to use any lacquer thinner. I'm just going to use some alcohol on these just to do a clean on them. Well, when I was cleaning underneath here, I noticed that this one linkage seems to be sticking out further than all the others. 
and it actually happens to be the, uh, the number four key. So uh, it looks like the number four works okay, but I was trying to investigate why that is. And Well, underneath the front here, it looks like the four key and the D key, the linkages are crossed, and it's probably something to do with the original. Let me get my hand out of the way. Here's the four, and here's the D. So it probably has something to do with the original configuration of the keyboard, uh, and then when they make these for the Western export market, they have to switch the linkages around, I'm guessing. Okay, so it has an ingenious little escapement mechanism. Basically, the escapement rocker is this part right here. So this arm that extends out from it, there is a pivot underneath here, which is actuated by this, and this is the space bar how the spacebar actuates the escapement like that. Then this uh, plate here slides in and out when the characters are typed. The uh, linkages near the end of the segment push up this plate along this shaft and that trips the escapement when you're typing letters, characters. Okay, well I was testing each of these keys by slowly pushing them in toward the imprint position. I noticed that the G key was sticking at the uh, type guide here and uh, the way these work is there's a little lower extension below the type slug that that little tab sticking down that's actually what goes in the slot of the type guide this one here was twisted a little bit it was kind of going in kind of like that instead of straight up and down so I just had to reform it a little bit and now it's not sticking anymore I don't see any more uh, sticking type bars so hopefully that was the only one and when you're testing these tie bars, uh, as you push the key down, there should be a point at which you hear the escapement click. And then when you release it, it should click again, like that. And you want to have that happen with every key. As I was testing the keys out, the D key and one of the other keys was not tripping the escapement. And it's this little piece right here that pushes on this, actually pushes on this right here to trip the escapement. And this wasn't protruding out quite far enough. It was right on the edge. There's a screw back there right here that you get to to loosen that. And this is like a cam. If you rotate it a little bit on this pivot point back here, you can get this protrusion here up on top to stick out a little further so that when you softly press on the keys, like the D key now, the escapement trips and goes back. What was doing intermittently is it would, it would do one, it would go rock over and not release when you do these softly. And now they look pretty consistent. Yay. And I suspect what happened was the tip of this little arm up here was probably worn a little bit. This face has been wearing off a little bit over the years as it hits this arm right here, the back side of it. And uh, now this one is protruding a little bit further out and hits it more easily. Keep in mind that the space bar feature, which is right here, the space bar was working fine. It trips the escapement on this lever. The letter keys trip the escapement on this lever right here. So for the line spacing selector, I took off this whole plate. These two screws uh, loosen the knob off. Take the knob, loosen this knob, but there's another screw down here with a little spacer you have to take off. This pops off. This frame was slightly bent right here, and the linkage on this 1-2 selector was actually hanging up a little bit. Reformed that thing right there, putting these back in, and just kind of tighten up this guy. There's a flat spot on the shaft where the uh, knob, the set screw on the uh, platen knob goes on to. So tighten up that set screw. There it goes. Okay, one little detail I should show you is, uh, you notice, or you may remember when we first looked at it, the front feet were shiny and the back feet were dull. Well, it's because the back feet were put on backwards. They've only chromed one edge or one side of the foot. The other side is like a dull nickel finish or whatever, so they just had to be put on right. And one of the 
foot has a missing screw, and so I went to my pile of miscellaneous screws and I found the right metric screw of the right length. It looks like it'll work. It's just a Phillips instead of a slotted, but uh, that's the only one I have that'll work. I'm going to use that for now. Okay, let's set the old margins. Something like that, and let's set it out to the edge of the paper just about. Okay. Well, do you remember I told you earlier about the scooter ride I had today and it was really windy? Well, it got even stormier, really windy, trees blowing around, dust, typical, you know, springtime southwest weather. And then some rain fell, and of course when you have rain and dust, what do you have? Mud! <laughs> yeah. Hey, but now look, it's all clear out and uh, balmy and the birds are chirping, so that's New Mexico weather for you. If you don't like the weather, wait five minutes, it'll change. But so it's a beautiful evening, and I'm going to sit out here on the patio and give this little beautiful machine a workout, do a little bit of brainstorm typing with it to this evening. Well, it's been some hours now since uh, I first brought this machine home and uh, tried it out. We serviced it, and it's in much better operating order now. I really think it is. And I think I have to change my uh, assessment, my initial assessment earlier about the typing action. I wasn't so favorable of it compared to maybe the Skywriter especially. But uh, now that uh, the escapement's working better, the touch is better, I really do like it. You know, there's no touch adjustment on this, but uh, it, it feels better and I'm starting to really like it more. And uh, I think you have to spend time with a typewriter to really get to know it. Uh, and I have about a week now uh, that I can spend with this before I have to return it to Kevin. So I hope to produce at least uh, one more, maybe a couple more videos about this Calibri and especially comparing it to the other ultra portables that are similar to it, the Rocket and the Skywriter. And I'd like to compare all three eventually and see uh, how I get on with them. Uh, how do they compare? Uh, um, but this thing is certainly pretty highly rated in my mind right now. Uh, I'm looking forward to spending a lot of time not tinkering with it, not as a as a device to repair, but I'm really looking forward to it as a tool for creativity. And I was certainly uh, writing some fun stream of consciousness things out there on the patio tonight in the in the beautiful evening air now that the day calmed down and the storm is gone. So that was fun and I'm looking forward to more fun typing on this. Well, look forward to another video or two about the Groma Calibri. I hope you guys found this interesting and I hope you guys had uh, some value out of this. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and uh, until next time, stay creative and have yourselves. A great day. Bye-bye.